What is happening and welcome to another four wheel drive talk episode and friends today we're going to be talking about diesel heaters. More specifically, see over the course of the last six months especially, go figure as we're coming into our winter season and it's pretty brisk out, uh, we've been talking a lot more about how to keep warm uh, during the winter months. Specifically, well for me, I've tried the propane heaters, I've tried a number of different, even some of the cheap Chinese uh, diesel heaters, and as I've mentioned mobile, or numerous times in some of my previous videos, I've narrowed it down to uh, planner, well actually planner is no longer planner. Planner is auto term, uh, but planner distribution still makes the portable diesel heaters, which we'll be talking about that here momentarily. But anyways, so I really love these diesel heaters. I've been using them now for the last two years and they are absolutely bulletproof. But it dawned on me when I started looking at some of the patterns of some of the questions coming in from you folks that perhaps I need to go back and create a video on step-by-step, step, how do I set up? Because a lot of you have been asking, how do I, you know, it's great, you're using these heaters, but how do you actually set up once you get out to location? So today's video, that's friends, what we're going to do here. If you have wondered how, when I get out to location, how specifically do I set up these diesel heaters? And there's, it really depends on a couple different scenarios. And we're gonna cover that here momentarily. Um, but first friends, look, we put these videos together to help you make more informed decisions. Get out there and enjoy your camping, overlanding in this particular case, winter camping. Now, if you find some value with these videos, friend, you'd be doing us a big favor, huge favor by crushing the hell out of that like button down below. It really means a lot. And hey, let's be real, it helps the whole YouTube algorithm. That said, my friends, pull up a seat and hey, come on, it's time. Let's go. All right, friends, first is first. Let me break down a couple different scenarios of how I use these heaters because that's gonna determine which of the two uh, diesel heaters that I have which ones I'm going to use. Now, if I am towing this sucker right here, and this of course is my 2020 Turtleback Expedition trailer. I absolutely love this thing. And in here, I mounted a two kilowatt uh, planner, which again, planner is now auto term, but at the time it was a planner uh, diesel heater. And in a moment, I'm gonna share with you when I get the location, I'm gonna actually step-by-step step show you specifically, we're gonna fire the heater up. Uh, so we're gonna go up inside here, I'm gonna show you exactly how we set this thing up and how we run it, and then also how we shut it down. I'm also gonna share with you some maintenance tips and just a few running you know, tips along the way as well. Now, then after that, I have the four kilowatt uh, planter distribution uh, diesel heater, that's the portable one that's in the back of my truck right now. And I'm gonna take that one out. And it, this setup is very similar um, and I'm gonna set that one up and show you how that works. And that's more if I'm heading out and I'm using uh, a ground tent of some sort, I use that heater right there. Now, a couple things that are very important, kind of house cleaning, house cleaning tips that you really need to know, regardless which diesel heater that you go with, there are a couple things, or a few things rather, that you really need to keep in mind. First off, these heaters will run on diesel or K1 kerosene. You don't want to use any kerosene substitutes. Um, it's, it's funny because last year I recommended that, or well, that's what I was using in one of my videos and so forth, and you really want to use just straight up regular kerosene. Don't get involved in it. Don't pick up those, uh, those additives or those substitutes rather. They just don't they don't give that same firepower as good kerosene does. Um, now, if you're heading up above in higher elevations or in colder weather, I think it's minus 15 or is it 15 degrees? Either way, I'll put it on the screen here. Uh, you want to use kerosene or at least put some, mix some kerosene in with your diesel. That's gonna prevent the, ker the diesel rather from gelling up. Now, what's super important about diesel heaters and many of you have asked questions with regards to the electrical side of it. The electrical is extremely important with a diesel heater. You wanna make sure whatever battery source that you have, it is rock solid. Nobody is going to, I have a seven and a half year old son and he's always running around and heck, who knows, sometimes I might not be paying attention myself. And so it's even more important, you wanna make sure your electrical connection is not gonna get knocked out or unplugged while the heater is running. You can actually uh, create or cause some damage to your diesel heater if it is unplugged and not shut down properly. So. 
when uh, I'm using my Turtleback, it's actually plugged on to, I have uh, two Ultimate Tron uh, 100 amp hour uh, lithium batteries up the front of this thing, and the, the diesel heater is hooked directly to those, so nothing's gonna happen there. With the portable one, which you'll see momentarily here, I have a 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter uh, jack in the back of the truck there, and I will plug it into there, and I'll usually rope it off. There's a little hook thing on the back, and I'll usually connect it to there. So therefore, that's not gonna go anywhere as well. Again, I can't stress how important that is. Now, one of the questions, and we'll get to the install here momentarily, or the setup rather, it's not really an install, but the setup, one of the other addresses, the questions that comes up or has been coming up is what sort of maintenance do you have to worry about with a diesel heater? And fortunately, there isn't much. Now, but I will say this, if you happen, because these heaters are extremely powerful, uh, and let's say you have a four kilowatt and you happen to be running it on low all night. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but before you shut it off in the morning, because again, it's running slow, there's, it could be some soot and some stuff inside there, what you wanna do is crank that sucker up for a good 15 minutes all the way before you shut it down. That's gonna push out any, any sort of residue or any sort of you know, nonsense that's inside of that thing out of that, and that's gonna keep your diesel heaters running years and years and years. So just kind of a word of, you know, kind of, Food for thought, if you're running on low uh, all night or for a handful of hours, just before you shut it off, just crank it up you know, for a good 10, 15 minutes and let it uh, clear itself out. That said, let's crack open and get this thing set up. All right, friends, so first is first, uh, I didn't do any housekeeping, so I'm just keeping this as it normally is when I get out to location. So normally I have my handy dandy coffee machine that is usually wedged on top. Actually, I'm gonna put this and so as you can see, I have usually my hose, this is a high, uh, high temperature silicon hose I picked up off of Amazon. I wanna say this thing was like 86 bucks or something like that. And it is intentionally long, guys. I had somebody point out uh, in the comments a few weeks ago, well, this is, you know, I didn't cut this. No, I did that on purpose because if I want to use the portable diesel heater and I don't want the heater close to the tent, or if I want to hook this up to a tent, I have the length uh, without having to you know, get fancy with how I position the heater. So this is intentionally left out long. All right, so as you can see, I have all my wires down in the bottom here. And the one cool thing with, uh, well, actually there's a lot of cool things that Planner Distribution does, uh, is these wires, harnesses, all these harnesses, this is how it comes from uh, Planner Distribution. They do a great job with all their, all their harnesses. And as you can see here, here are my two Ultimate Tron batteries that I was referencing a moment ago. And you can see my power is connected directly to the top. That is not going nowhere. Okay, so usually when I get out the location, the first thing I have to do is because I very rarely put everything away nice and neat here is separate both of my cables. Here is my thermostat. I'm gonna put that right here. And here is the power cable. Now the power cable, I'm not gonna do much with that right now. The first thing I'm going to do here is, actually I'll set that here. So on my tent, I will open up, there's a little slot right here, which is a hole large enough to be able to fit this hose into. I will take one of the ends. I'm gonna shove that right up in there. It's, that's a tight fit and usually I'll at least get it most of the way in there and then I will, once I get into the tent, I will pull whatever excess that I need. From there, I'm going to route this in through the side and I'm just going to, it works out great. This fits, let me grab the other camera here. So as you can see, this is how this hose routes in here. It works out really nice. I do put this hammer here to get the hose off the batteries because this can get warm. And the hose fits perfectly right on the front of my two kilowatt diesel heater right here. So that's the connection right there. Now, what we're going to do here is let's get this, the power plugged in on this side. And you can see here is, I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. Here is the cable, my, my power cable. I'm just simply going to, oh, this could be tough. Okay, here we go, one-handed, here we go. Mm. <laughs> that wasn't gonna happen. Okay, 
All right, fantastic. All right, I had to cheat a little bit and put the camera down so I can get both hands on it, but you can see that is now connected. Now, what we do, here's my thermostat. I'm going to put that up into the tent as well. And then we're gonna jump up in the tent and the party will begin up there. Kind of the same thing what I did before is just kind of shove that up in there. Now that thing has a thermostat built into it, actually a couple different means of controlling the diesel heater. Now one thing I do want to point out before I get jumping up in the tent, uh, if you have a separate fuel container, you want to crack that open so you can allow a little airflow to come get on in there. Uh, and depending upon how you have your diesel heater set up. Now my air intake is right here. So when I get the location, I keep this cracked. So therefore airflow is able to get into this thing and the, the heater is able to breathe and push out all the heat that it needs to. Now we're gonna jump up in the tent. We're gonna fire this thing up and off to the races. Okay. All right, friends. So as you can see, usually what I'll do is I'll route this up into the hose up in here and I'll usually wedge it behind this bar right here. But we have the window open for some light right now. So, you know, I'm just gonna keep it like that. Now, the this is the thermostat. So the, the thermostats, you have two different types of thermostats for these heaters. Now, this particular one is the touchscreen. Uh, on the portable one, we have the analog, which I'll show you here in a moment. But to operate, this thing doesn't get any easier. You just simply press the center. So as you can see, we're live right now. This is going to fire up. Now this does take a few minutes. So you don't want to touch anything else. You usually hear, as soon as you hit that, you hear the, the motor will usually make the I know, my sound effects really aren't nothing special. But what's gonna happen here is the heater's gonna start doing its startup sequence and it's hard to pick it up on the mic here. And you'll start hearing a very faint tick, tick, tick. And that's just the fuel pump starting to prime the heater and it's gonna fire up momentarily. And while we're waiting for this thing to fire up, uh, I'll talk a little kind of general discussion about diesel heaters itself. Uh, one of the reasons why I'm such a advocate for diesel heaters. Uh, first off, compared to before, I used to use a, a buddy heater. Buddy heaters are great if you're in a wide open space, uh, lots of oxygen, um, but no, actually no, I take that back because I really hate, with the buddy heaters, they created a lot of moisture and that's the biggest thing with me that just drove me up the wall. I didn't care for the, for the, uh, the, the moisture that these heaters uh, created. On top of that, uh, you have the the uh, the oxygen levels can get you, you want to have a carbon monoxide uh, detector uh, inside the tent as well and from a safety standpoint okay so now we can hear the heater beginning to I'm going to put this mic over here so you can hear the kind of a hollow sounding air whooshing through the the tube itself and now the heater is just beginning to wind up and start getting its uh start getting its startup uh, sequence moving along. So this thing's gonna be in full motion here momentarily. And so we can bring it back over to here. Yep, actually you can hear that beginning to run and the air is beginning to warm up and it's gonna really warm up here momentarily. But anyways, going back to what I was saying in a moment ago, uh, the propane heaters are just, you know, there's there's a lot more risk with it. With a diesel heater, and the reason when you, let me clarify, when you get a quality diesel heater, it's fantastic dry heat. And as you saw, it doesn't take long to get this thing set up when you get out to locations. Now today it took me a little bit longer than it normally does because I'm talking to you folks sharing basically how to get this thing set up. So usually when I get the location, I usually have heat set up within two to three minutes. And right now the heat is definitely picking up a lot of heat. I'm gonna bring the mic over. I'm honestly not sure if you're going to hear hear that. What we're gonna do in a moment, because another question that I get asked quite often is how loud is the heater and so in a minute here we're going to go down and i'm going to take bring you along with the the gopro we're going to hear just how you hear firsthand how 
quiet these heaters are. Um, and so, and another thing while we're letting this kind of spool up here, uh, you pick up a heater like this, you want to have, make sure that you set up the, from an installation standpoint, and I'll, I'll show you on camera as well, you want to have the air intake and the exhaust of this thing, make sure you get that about a good three feet or three to four feet away from one another. Uh, that's really important. You don't want this, the exhaust going into the intake that is then coming up into where you're at. That's, uh, that's, that's not gonna be fun. Okay, so now this thing is really in full swing right now. It's moving along pretty good. Let me show with you, or share with you rather, some of the options that you have with these heaters. So you can control the heater via through, as you can see, I'm able to move it based upon kind of raw settings itself. I say raw settings, you can set it to one, two, three, four, five, six, ten. 10. Uh, alternatively, you can go into settings and you can see you have all sorts of, all sorts of different options that you have here. So as I was saying a moment ago, you have a few different ways that you can control this heater. You can go with the panel sensor, external sensor, or power. We have it set to power right now. If we go to panel sensor, which is more kind of acting as kind of like a thermostat, so now let's go back to the home page here, and as you can see, it is now showing different temperatures that you can set this thing to. And so we can move this up to 72, 73 as I have it here, and this thing's going to do what it can to keep this thing at 73. And we just bumped up to 70 here. It doesn't get easier than this. And especially uh, a couple videos ago, I was talking about when I head out with my son, I have a lot of redundancy or a lot more redundancy baked into our adventures. I wanna make sure my seven and a half year old son is comfortable. And I want that peace of mind from a safety standpoint that things are really on our sides or you know we've we've done what we can to make the trip as safe as possible diesel heater a good quality diesel heater is really the way to go and so planter distribution these guys do a, again a fantastic job this heater's been in here coming on to two years not a single issue and i use this sink a lot okay now let's go downstairs and listen to how loud this thing is from outside Okay, now I intentionally have this thing cranked way up right now so you can actually hear, try to get a little audio here for you to hear. Here is the exhaust. And as I was sharing with you a moment ago, I have the air inlet over there and that's going into the motor of the heater itself. I'm gonna be quiet so you can hear this. The microphone is about a foot away from the exhaust. Now if we step back, we have a train going by. Okay, now I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to power this thing off. Now again, this is super important. You just can't, you just can't, wow, this is really getting warm in here. Look at already, oops. Let me go back to this here. Oops, let me go back, go back. All right, as you can see, this thing, I have the front window, the front door open. I have the window open here. It's already 74 degrees in here. It was 68 just minutes ago, 75 degrees. When I say these things put out a lot of heat, these things put out a ton of heat. Again, as I was saying a moment ago, there's really good reasons why I'm constantly preaching and praising about these heaters. Planter distribution does a great job, or the auto term, which is the one that's actually in the nose of the, the turtle back here, really does a great job. Now, there are a few options out there that make really solid diesel heaters, because I do get asked this, well, why did I go with uh, planter distribution or auto term. Well, the, for me, uh, you have Webasco, which is another great brand, but for me, the, the auto term uh, diesel heaters are just a little bit more quiet. And when I'm out in the, especially when I'm out in nature, 
yeah, every bit of quiet, every bit of uh, kind of creature comforts is a plus. So I chose planner or auto term over a Webasco simply because these are a little quieter. Shifting gears to shut this off, it is as simple as what you saw when we started it. We're going to hit the center button and then you're going to see an hourglass show here. And it's going to go down through about a few minutes, I think it's three or five minute shutdown sequence. So here we go. So now you see the hourglass, and from there, you don't want to touch or do anything else. It is that simple. It's going to start doing its shutdown process, and in a minute, it will be off. And once it's off, then you're, you are good to go to unplug whatever you need to and start packing up camp. Boom, 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 boom. All right, friends, and as we can hear, the heater is no longer running. So... Again, how we want to back or, or basically stow this thing away is kind of going backwards to what we did there. First is first, I am going to unplug the power. Because the last thing I want to do is because I'm going to be handling the thermostat, I want to avoid accidentally hitting that button and turning this thing back on and then accidentally unplugging this thing while it's in a startup sequence. That would not be good. So this thing is unplugged. I'm going to pull the larger hose out first. I'm going to disconnect it. I want to avoid stepping on it. Yes, I have stepped on it and I screwed it up before. I'm going to pull out my thermostat. Make at least some sort of effort to wind this up nicely here. One of these is I got to get a case I'm going to put inside the nose of this here to put all my wires in there. As we can see, we have a little bit of a rat's nest going here. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to deal with that later. I'm going to tuck this down on the bottom. I'm going to take my hose. I'm going to plop that into the top here. Put my handy dandy coffee machine and back up on top. And that is that. Now, let's shift gears to the portable heater. Okay, so again, we're going to go through the whole startup sequence with this one. This is as simple as this one is. This one's actually really stinking cool. Now, you guys may recall, um, two was it two months ago, a month and a half ago, uh, when my son and I were out in Arizona at Kofa with the Turtleback uh, uh, group out there, the first few nights we stayed in this with the two kilowatt uh, heater, keeping that up nice and warm. Now the last night, because we wanted to get up early, so I had this all packed up, ready to go, and I launched the Overlandish Base Camp uh, 2 ground tent, or technically that was already launched. So we decided to put the four kilowatt, well actually no, it wasn't the last night, because we had this, I had this heater in there the whole time that we were over there because we used the Overlandish tent as kind of an office, a communal area uh, where we could stay. I, I actually used it as an office space while I was out there. And I used the four kilowatt heater the entire time while I was out there keeping the tent warm. So what we're gonna do here is again, kind of similar to that, I'm gonna share with you how easy it is to get this thing fired up. Let me share with you some of the basic anatomy of this uh, portable heater right here. Uh, this right here, of course, is your exhaust. Unlike the two kilowatt that's in my uh, in the trailer here, this one has the fuel tank actually fastened to it. So these guys really make this a great all-in-one. You're heading out the door, just grab it like a briefcase and off you go. Uh, the weight is relatively lightweight. I don't know what it is off the top of my head. Uh, I will put it on the screen if I can find it. Uh, but as you can see here, form factor is very small. You have the air inlet, uh, which is going to feed it the air that it needs inside. You have the, where it's going to shoot the air out. I actually have a tip or a hack that I'm gonna share with you guys here momentarily as well. So to crack this thing open, okay, you have these latches up on the top here. So we're gonna crack these things open. Let me turn this around so you guys can see everything that is in there. So you might notice because these come in two different uh, sizes. You have a four kilowatt and you have a two kilowatt. Now, you may see, like for example, a buddy of mine uh, just picked up a two kilowatt and that's gonna have a single 
air inlet. This one has two because it's a larger heater, so it requires more oxygen, more air coming into it. If you happen to get a two kilowatt, it's gonna have one air vent coming into it uh, as well. And there's also one down on the bottom here as well. So we're gonna crack this thing open. Again, like I was mentioning with the two kilowatt, these guys do a great job. All the harnesses, all the wiring is super nicely laid out. I do apologize, this was, <laughs> this is, this is kind of all tucked in here quickly from the last trip that we went on. Boom, boom, boom. And the cable, I wanna say this is a good 15, 20 feet. It is pretty lengthy. Now, let's look at a few things here on this heater. As you can see, the, the size of the heater itself is a little bit larger than the two. Actually, it's noticeably larger, but you can see everything is all nicely laid out here. Now, here's the little hack there. If you're going to be in some very cold area, uh, weather that you're gonna be dealing with, you can notice See, this is right where the, the heater is blowing the air out at you here. You have a vent that's down here. You'll see there's four nuts holding this thing in. What you can do is you can disconnect these four nuts, turn this fitting the opposite direction. So now you have a pipe heading out this way. You can actually put a hose there, put that, run that into your tent and with a separate hose. So technically you're gonna have two hoses now going into your tent. You're gonna have one that's feeding air into inside the, the heater uh, and you have one that's bringing the air back out. So it's circulating that air and it's gonna keep that tent a lot toastier because it's taking in the semi-warm air or the warm air that's in your tent, recycling it through the heater and pushing it back out rather than the frigid cold air going inside this thing. So that's a cool little hack there if you plan to be in some pretty cold areas. All right, so now let's, let's get this thing set up. So I told you a moment ago up inside when we were playing around with the other heater, you have a different controller with this heater. And here it is right here. As you can see, it is much different from the thermostat or the touchscreen one. This one's pretty straightforward. You just have a knob here that you set the temperature to your desire and that's it. It's less to fuss about. So we're gonna close this up. And these cases are absolutely awesome. You have a couple locking points here as well extremely well made and like i was pointing out before with the other one this doesn't get any simpler to put together you have two wires that you're going to plug into this you have your control which as you can see this is a big fat wide one you have one wide one right there you're going to pop that in you're going to get a clicking noise out of it and here is our power smaller wire we're going to plug that into here Again, you hear that good firm connection. All right, so as I shared earlier, this particular setup, I have it set up for oops, a 12 volt cigarette lighter, which is in the back of the truck itself. Now, again, I feel it necessary to reiterate or at least remind one of the, out of everything you do with the heater, super important, you walk away with understanding that you wanna make sure you have a good, solid electrical connection. So that is that. So, and you can see again with this, you have a very long cable. I'm gonna plug this in. And I'm going to make sure that is, okay, we got that. Okay, we should. All right, so we're going to hit, you have two options here. I'm gonna hit the little wavy line, which I just did. And like before, you hear the heater kind of, that fan spool up just briefly. And now what it's going to do is it's going to take a few minutes and start firing up. So in a moment, we're gonna hear this thing really ripping and roaring. And then I'll share with you how to shut this one down as well. I absolutely love this heater. Now, while we're waiting for this thing to fire up here, let me discuss another question that comes across my radar quite often. Should you get a portable unit or should you go with a fixed unit? Now, this really depends on how you're going to be using the heater itself. Now, if you plan on just simply heading out with a trailer only, that's the only time you need the heater, 
honestly, save yourself a few bucks and just get the fixed unit, install it in there, be done with it. The flip side, if you plan to do any ground camp or uh, ground tent camping, uh, or better yet, because this heater, uh, I can my garage doesn't have a heater. I can use this to heat my garage. Uh, if I had an RV uh, or a space that needed heat, this thing is perfect for this. This thing, hands down, the portable unit, you spend a few bucks more for it, but there's a lot more versatility where you can use this versus this is once it's mounted, it's mounted. Now, granted, you can take it off and actually you can hear. This one's starting to go through its startup cycle. You can hearing that motor grabbing more fuel and just going through that whole combustion phase and just getting ramped up. And again, before like what we did before, once this gets up to speed, I'm gonna step back so you guys can hear just how quiet or how you know, the how this sounds once it's running at full speed. But going back to this, so those are really the, the two options. If you plan to just be heading out with a trailer or an RV, uh, or you know people cram these things into boats, boats are quite popular with these heaters as well, go with a fixed unit. Uh, depending upon uh, another question, so you go with a two or a four. A rooftop tent, Man, save yourself some bucks. Go with the two kilowatt. The four, granted, if it's a super large tent and you have an annex room, yeah, go with the four. Uh, but on my on this, I'm always using just always heating just the rooftop tent, so the two kilowatt is perfect, and it's a little bit more efficient on fuel as well. Um, so, and that actually leads me to another question: is how how long do I get running off of these things? Usually, when I go heading out. The two kilowatt, I have a, this is a, 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 this is a two gallon tank right here. This will last an entire weekend. And now we can hear this thing is really beginning to spool up. And it is cranking out a ton of heat already. You know, it's funny is every time this thing starts up, with my sense of humor, I always have that, uh, what is it, uh, Rob Schneider, you can do it! <laughs> This thing really doesn't waste any time and it really gets up to speed fast. And that's the big difference. Again, if you have a little bit more space, a little bit more volume of an area that you need heat, go with the four kilowatt. This thing is an absolute tank. This thing really kicks off a lot of heat. But anyway, so to control this heater, you just control, turn the knob and off to the races you go. And as you can hear, this thing is kind of cycling up. It was cold out in Arizona in that large tent there. This thing was keeping it. We had it, boy, I think it was like 78 degrees inside that tent. It was perfect. Oh yeah. Absolutely love this thing. Again, I have a video coming up that talk is yeah, gonna be breaking down some of my most widely used uh, assets that when I go out overlanding. Hands down, you're gonna hear me talking about this diesel heater again, because it is, uh, from winter camping standpoint, and I, I, I said this a few videos back where I was talking about my favorite modifications I've made to my turtleback. Now granted, this is not part of it where I was talking about the two kilowatt, but I absolutely love these heaters. All right, friends, this thing is in full swing right now and it is incredibly hot, dry air coming out of this. Now we're gonna take a step back here. I'm intentionally being quiet so you can hear just how quiet this heater is. And we're right directly in front of the exhaust, maybe about three feet away. We're gonna take a step back a little bit further. Now, mind you, again, this heater is cranked up as, as fast as it will go. So again, I wanted to intentionally share with you this so therefore you can see how, basically, how quiet these machines actually are. Now that said, let's do the startup or the, uh, the shutdown sequence on this. And as with the other one, it is relatively very simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna hit one button and again, like the other one before, it's gonna do a shutdown sequence. We're gonna hit the same button that we started it with. Um, and very important, we, want to, we don't wanna to touch this thing, or I'm sorry, the electrical connection until this is completely off. So let it do its uh, shutdown process properly. We're gonna hit the button. It's gonna blink a couple times, or a few times rather.
As you can hear, we can already hear it's starting to wind down. And that's it. So once this thing finishes doing its shutdown process and it's completely shut off, then of course we're gonna unplug everything, put everything away, and that is it. It doesn't get easier than that. But friends, that is it. Hopefully this answered a lot of your questions or any of the questions that you might have had with regards to how these heaters work. Uh, again, very straightforward, very easy. Now, of course, if you want more information, I'm going to put links down below in the description below so therefore you can get more information or pick yourself up one of these heaters itself. Now, it's that time in the video where, friends, I'm going to be shutting off the camera. So before we do, if you found some value with this video, do me a favor, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button so therefore you don't miss a single video like the one that you just saw there. Make certain you hit all notifications so YouTube does its whole thing every time we come out with a new video. But that said, Friends, you get out there, stay healthy, and find your adventure. <laughs>